Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is How to Survive EVE Online. Before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Paul Suarez Jr., who is the creator of the YouTube video series How to Survive Minecraft, which is what inspired me to create my own video series, but based on a game that I play, EVE Online. EVE Online is a massive multiplayer online game created and maintained by Crowd Control Productions of Reykjavik, Iceland. It is a space-themed game, uh, a sandbox game with a very strong player versus player slant, but it also, also has some interesting player versus environment elements. It's a very deep and complex game, but also with a very steep, infamously vertical learning curve. So I've created this video series to help new players get started in the game. When you log into the game for the very first time, you are going, that is, you've put in your account name and password, and you've watched the introductory movie, Dare to be Bold Pilot, you will be presented with a character creation screen, the first step of which is to choose your race. It's worth pointing out that uh, the four different races that are available to you are just different descendants of humanity. Uh, your choice of race only determines, in part, your starting location in the universe and some of your very initial skills. But you can always cross-train into any other racial skills, and you can always travel to any other part of the universe. So, your initial choice of race uh, doesn't limit you in any way, gameplay-wise. It does determine your the appearance of your avatar, and if you're a role player, it does determine your ba uh, part of your backstory. So these things are immutable on character creation. Right. So for this tutorial, I am going to create a Galente character. The only true democracy of New Eden, the Galente Federation is a powerful and prosperous multicultural dominion that welcomes outsiders with open arms. Intolerant of closed societies, the Galente are fierce defenders of personal and social liberties. I'm then going to click Next in the lower right hand corner. And I will then be asked to choose a bloodline and a gender as soon as the screen actually loads. Here we go. Uh, the bloodline and the gender only determine your appearance and again part of your lore and do not have any functional gameplay aspect. Uh, so I'm going to click the main Galente bloodline and male, and click next. On the next screen, you are going to be presented with the initial mold of your avatar. Right now we're looking at the head, and we can change the angle of view by just left clicking and dragging an empty spot on the background. In the upper left hand corner, you can click the larger hexagon to zoom out and see the full body, All right. including the um, neural jackets, uh, the neural sockets that your character, according to the lore, connects to to control the st his starship with his mind. Or you can click on the smaller hexagon to focus on the head again. Okay. Uh, there is a randomize all option. Uh, by the way, the five dots in the upper left corner represent the different steps of character creation. You can back up to an earlier step if you want to change one of the earlier options. Or just click the back button in the lower right corner. So first of all, uh, there are some customization options in the upper right corner. Uh, these headers can be expanded or collapsed just by clicking on them. Uh, I'm going to change the complexion to be something a bit more fair. Uh, you can do things like add freckles, or scarring, or even aging. But I'm going to set these values back to their minimum. The shape uh, sets some initial characteristics for the molds of your avatar. You can, in general, set the weight, or the muscularity of your character. I'm just going to leave it at the default. Uh, once you've set some general options, you can mouse over a particular body part 
and uh, click and drag to more fine-tune that particular area of the body. All right. So torso, arms, legs, whatever. Uh, what I'm going to do next... You know what, let me get some clothes on. You are required to put clothes on your avatar, at the very least. Uh, if you click next, it says, True clothing of the following categories must be equipped to your character before continuing bottom, top, and feet. No shirt, no pants, no shoes, no service. So, uh, let's get some pants on. Uh, these subheaders can also be expanded or collapsed by left-clicking on them, just the same as with the main header. Uh, you can left-click and drag in any subsection uh, to scroll through the options, and then just left-click on a particular picture to select it. So that sets the pants. Uh, for the feet, I'm going to take th this pair of boots. Uh, no glasses for the top section. Uh, what's a good shirt? Here we go. Collapse that. Let me select a mid layer. And I also like to have an outer, outer layer. All right. That sets all the options below the neck that I care to play around with right now. I'm going to zoom in on the face. And let me actually set a hairstyle. Again, I can left click and drag uh, from one side to the other to scroll through options. Here we go. Hairstyle number six. Uh, root color, hair color. There we go. Collapse the hair. Let's take a look at the eyes. Let's pick some shade of brown. Okay. If you want body modifications, you can left click this last header here, and you can look at scars, tattoos, or various sorts of piercings. And again, these also have subsections, and you can left click and drag to go through the various options available. I'm not going to put any of these on my character. Left click body modifications again, go back to the main set of menus. And finally, <clears throat> oh, I almost forgot. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom your camera in and out. Uh, so mouse wheel down to zoom in, mouse wheel up to zoom out. Uh, that's true in any context of the game that you are looking at. So the mouse wheel can always be used to zoom the camera in and out. Uh, let me shape the head a bit. Cheekbones are kind of jutting out there. And mouse over this part. Round that out a bit. Let's see, make the chin. There we go. Now, can I turn the head separately? From... Not right now. Stop moving, would you? And make the nose a little thinner. There we go. Nice round friendly face. Uh, your appearance, once you finish creating your character, your appearance, as well as your name, but we'll get to the name later, your appearance is immutable. So you may want to spend some time playing around with the appearance options, uh, because you have to live with these choices uh, once you're done. Your ability to recustomize your avatar later on is going to be limited. So once you're comfortable with how your avatar looks, you can click Next. And here, you will be asked to create a portrait. Uh, these are pictures by which anybody using a show info window on you uh, to get information about your character. This is how your character will appear to them. Uh, you can set a background image. Again, you can left click and drag to cycle through everything. 
Where's the Galente one? Here we go. Uh, you can set a pose. Uh, I think it's pose number two that I like to use. There we go. Or maybe it's number one. You can also change the direction of the lighting as well as the intensity. The intensity bar is down here underneath the various pictures for the lining styles. And you can also, you know what, let me give this guy a smile. And when you're happy with the portrait, you can left click the camera icon uh, to take a picture. Uh, one portrait will suffice. There are multiple portrait slots available. I believe the different images are used in different contexts, although I forget which contexts are which, so personally I only bother with one portrait. Once you're happy with the portrait, click Next, and the last step of the character creation process, uh, you choose your ancestry and your education. The ancestry really doesn't have any uh, in-game effect, uh, as of the current patch. Uh, I'm just going to set that to immigrants. Your education determines which NPC corporation you start off in. Uh, your character in EVE Online is always a member of some corporation. That can't be changed. There's no such thing as a character without a corporation. So you start off in an NPC corporation. If you're in a player corporation, which is EVE Online's version of a guild, and you are, and you decide to just leave that player corporation or you get kicked out, then you are uh, ejected to one of the NPC corporations. Uh, for this tutorial, I am going to choose Center for Advanced Studies. If you have a friend who has been playing EVE Online longer than you, and uh, you're going to arrange to meet up with your friend in game, make sure you tell your friend which face of character you are creating and what your education is. Uh, that way your friend can figure out uh, where to meet up with you without having to pay an NPC called a locator agent to go find you. Finally, you can choose your name. There are two text fields for this purpose. Uh, the second field is simpler. Uh, one word only, no spaces. So I'm going to put in Dunahoo. For the first field, you can have one space in here. So you can have up to two words. So for example, I could put Professor... Seamus. So the way the game is going to construct uh, the way the game is going to construct this name is it will just take the first field, then add a space, and then put on the second field. So this will appear as three words. Professor Seamus Dunahoo. I can click the check availability button. It's a green check mark. Nobody has taken that name yet. I would be very surprised if somebody had taken that name already. Uh, so when you're happy with all of your other op all of these options, you can click finalize and click OK. At this point, I'm going to let the in-game uh, voiced tutorials take over for a moment. I will only supplement as necessary. Welcome to your new life. My name is Aura. I have been installed via neural visual uplinks and embedded within your neocortex. I will always be here. My primary role is to assist whenever you need me. The tutorial window appears in the lower right corner initially. You can click and drag to move it out of the way. Uh, Another thing I like to do is move station services all the way against the right edge of the screen. Let's click Next. I'm communicating to you now through the Neocom. This interface allows you to interact with a range of services and menus. Let me know when you are ready to continue. By the way, if you find the tutorial window to be too small for your tastes, you can left click and drag an edge or corner of it and expand or contract it. Let's click next. You can review any of these tutorials again at any time.
So that's the Eve help button on the Neocom on the left hand side of the screen, and the tutorials tab. Good. The neural uplink appears to be functioning. Now that your original body has been euthanized without complications, you are ready to begin training as a capsule pilot. First, you should get used to your new clone. Take a moment to walk around your captain's quarters. I'll run a few last minute tests on your basic motor functions while you stretch your legs. So that's just use of the W, A, S, and D keys. I can also hold down the left mouse button, click and drag, and while holding down W, I can click and drag the mouse to turn. And the game also tells you you can use the scroll mouse wheel to zoom in and out. I mentioned that previously. Also talks about left click and drag. You are now being provided with a skill book. The ability to learn by direct cerebral augmentation is one of a Capsuleer's most important abilities. Your brain has been modified to allow for the direct injections of skill books, which will remap your neural structure to accommodate new ideas, experience and knowledge. Locate the skill book in your item hanger. The Neocom allows you to access the station's item hanger from your captain's quarters. Access your skill queue to begin training. This is where you manage skill training. Add the skill to the queue now. You can schedule 24 hours worth of training. Remember, skills train in real time, so you should always have a skill in training. What may have been uh, neglected here is you have to right click the skill book and select inject skill. And then you go to the training queue. The skill book we just injected happens to be under the mechanics category. Uh, so you're going to left click mechanics and that expands all the skills under the mechanics header which is a skill also called mechanics but now also repair systems drag repair sorry let me go that more go over that more slowly left click and drag from where it says repair systems on the left hand side drag it over to the right and let go of the mouse button and then click apply click next you're ready to begin the pilot certification course. This course covers navigational basics, in-space piloting, combat, and interstellar travel. When you're ready to begin your certification, speak to me through the agent panel. All right, before we actually get to the agent panel, uh, there's something I need to talk about skills because this is very, very important. In other, uh, in other online games, your character becomes more powerful by going out, killing monsters, getting experience points, and when you accumulate, accumulate enough experience points... Uh, hold on, let me turn down the jukebox a bit. Where is it? Accessories, here we go. Let me drag that in. I'll tell you more about the customizable Neocon later. Alright. So in other games, you kill things, you get experience points, and when you have enough experience points, you level up. And when you level up, you gain access to more uh, skills and abilities, and you, you become more powerful. In EVE Online, you don't become more powerful directly by going out and killing things, or doing stuff. Rather, you gain new abilities by injecting skill books, such as the one you found in your items hanger here and then queuing up the skill in the training queue window. This is a background process. So right now you are putting, you are generating skill points in the repair system skill, or if you're playing a Kaldari or a Min Matar character, I think you might have been given shield compensation instead of repair systems, whichever it may be. So you're slowly generating skill points, and once you have enough skill points to bring it up to, in this case, 250, 
you can see the number ticking up here is 61, 62. Once you've accumulated enough, you go up to the next level in that particular skill, and that allows you to use a new module or a new ship, or it might make your existing modules and ships better. Uh, this is a background process. You will be generating skill points, whether you're in station, in space, shooting things, not shooting things, uh, doing industrial stuff, doing mining, uh, doing exploration, doing mission running, combat, uh, fighting other players, uh, at your keyboard, not at your keyboard, logged in, logged out, all the time. No exceptions, as long as you have something in the queue. Skill training is the single slowest process in EVE Online. From the moment you get to this point, and forevermore, you want to have some skill in training. So, for the meantime, let's put in some filler. Click on Spaceship Command and uh, drag your Racial Frigate skill. For my character, it's Galente Frigate, but this might also say Amar, Kaldari, or Minmatar. Whatever your starting Racial Frigate is. Left click and drag. Let's bring that over once. And let's do it again. So we've now queued up level 3 and level 4 in our Racial Frigate skill, and we click the Apply button. Always remember to click the Apply button whenever you make changes to your training queue. Otherwise, the changes don't take effect when you close the window. Alright. Uh, now let's continue on with the built-in game tutorial. So click the Agents tab, and then right-click Aura and start conversation. When you've read the mission briefing, click Accept to begin. Proceed down the hallway to the ship hangar balcony. There you can board your capsule and undock. You can just double click a spot on the floor and your character will walk over there. You are ready to undock and get your first ship. This is not a simulation. The moment you undock, you will be entering a live environment. Get to your ship quickly. You can click the undock panel here on the balcony. It's not strictly necessary to walk all the way out here. You can just click the undock button in the lower left corner. Either method works. Whenever you are given a mission, you will be provided with a bookmark to that location, allowing you to warp there. Right click, Ancient Missions, covering the basics, Encounter Dead Space, Warp to Location. Hold on, let me do this someplace where it won't overlap itself. Right click Empty Space, Agent Missions, covering the basics, Encounter Dead Space Warp to Location. Um, it is very important to navigate the submenus carefully. If you accidentally mouse over Agent Home Base, you're going to see Approach Location rather than Warp to Location. So make sure you go through this one step at a time. One, two, three, click. Warp Drive active. and camera shake annoys me to no end. I'm going to hit escape, I'm going to turn off the camera shake, and I'm going to close the window. Take control of your camera drones now to change the view around your capsule. Every ship you pilot comes pre-fitted with self-piloting camera drones. These drones function as your eyes in space and provide full tactical awareness. Camera drones can also move in and out from your ship. So again with the mouse wheel, or I can hold down both the left and right mouse buttons at once, move up and down. You can control your drones manually and look freely about your environment. Use them now to locate the nearby acceleration gate. 
I've relayed instructions to your Neocom on how to perform basic commands from your ship. Try selecting the acceleration gate now with left click. These next instructions cover the use of your context menu. Try using it now. Right click the acceleration gate and select activate gate from the context menu. When activated the gate will warp you to the next area. If you are ever unsure about how to interact with something, open the context menu to see what options are available. Important concept, it's worth repeating, a lot of things can be right clicked. Warp drive active. Excellent work. You have arrived at the location. Locate your ship and board it. Again, what you can do is right click the ship in question. It's going to show up with a green square. By the way, this uh, icon here with the square corners, that's called a bracket. Skill training completed. Ah, repair systems level 1 is complete. Uh, we'll see in a moment why that's useful. Uh, but this icon here is called a bracket. So right click and board ship. A capsule pilot must be aware of their shields, armor, and structure levels, as well as velocity and capacitor power. All of this information and more is contained at a glance within your heads-up display. So this is the heads-up display, also called the capacitor donut. By the way, as long as we're talking about this thing, notice that there's a little icon to the lower right corner of the capacitor donut. It looks like four thin horizontal bars. It's That's called a menu icon. There's a menu icon down here. There's a menu icon up here. There's a menu icon on the overview. You're going to see menu icons in quite a number of places in EVE Online. But for the heads-up display, I can left-click the menu. I'd like to show my empty module slots. I'll tell you what module slots are later, or maybe Aura will. Left-click the menu again. Show readout. And we now have numbers. I also like to have an absolute readout. If you want to, you can also align the heads-up display to the top of the screen. But I like to keep it at the bottom. All right. Common interactions are available in the selected items panel. Select the acceleration gate now and activate it from the panel. So this is another method for activating the gate. Besides right-clicking the gate in space, or right-clicking the gate in this window over here called the overview, I can instead just left-click the activate gate button. You know, that's incredibly tiny. Let me rearrange this a bit. I'm going to move the selected item box all the way up into the corner and make it a little bigger. There we go. I'm going to move the overview. Oh, any window in EVE Online, almost any window in EVE Online can be moved by left-clicking and dragging the title bar to the window. And most windows can be expanded or collapsed by left-clicking and dragging an edge or corner of the window. Here I'm dragging an edge. Here I'm dragging a corner. If there are columns, like in a spreadsheet, you can left-click and drag the column header to arrange the width of the columns. But anyway, for the activation of the gate, I can left-click the gate and then left-click Activate. You are making great progress. Now, travel to the final area of this training site and locate the item you are asked to retrieve. If you need to take manual control, give your ship a direction and it will travel that way at full speed. So you can double left click in empty space to manually move in that direction. Uh, you can also hit control spacebar on your keyboard to full stop, or you can left click this little triangle here on the capacitor donut. Uh, now what you can do with that Galente cargo rig, you need to be within 2500 meters to grab an item from it. So you can left-click the rig, and you can click 
approach. Uh, what's new with one of, with Crucible, you can just left click open cargo instead and your ship will automatically approach the cargo rig first. And once it's within range, it will automatically you open. You must now retrieve the item from the structure in front of you. You have new instructions in your Neocom on how to transfer items to your ship's cargo. Sorry about that. Uh, so you can click open cargo, your ship will get close enough, and then it will open the, uh, the thing in space automatically. Now, the instructions that you're given by the tutorial are correct, but it's not the only method anymore. What the tutorial is telling you to do is click your cargo hold button on the left side of your capacitor donut, and that will open a tab here. You can... Oh, these are tabs of a window. Windows can be merged together with tabs. I could merge, I can also separate tabs into a separate window, or I can go merge my cargo hold with my overview if I wanted to do such a thing. And, or I can just separate it out again if I don't like it like that. Now what your tutorial is telling you to do is left click and drag the object from this thing that represents the Galente cargo rig and drag it into your cargo hold and then let go. That's one way to grab something. I will show you a different way to You've do it done later well, on. Pilot. You should walk back to the station and dock. So left click the station. And by the way, when you left click something on your overview, it will also select its bracket in space. So the Center for Advanced Studies School is way off in the distance over there. Important concept in EVE Online. Distances are modeled realistically. That station is 9.4 astronomical units away, which is... where did the calculator go? Uh, accessories, calculator, here we go. So that station is 9.4 astronomical units away, and every astronomical unit is 150 million kilometers, so that station is about 1,410,000,000 kilometers away from me right now. If I double left click in space, and look at my velocity indicator. I'm going somewhere around, well, much less than one kilometer per second. It's going to take me half of forever to get over to that station on a sublight drive. That's why every ship has a warp drive. But in order to use your warp drive, your ship has to start moving towards it at sublight first. So watch what happens if I've got this big fat thing in my way, and I try to click the station and hit dock. So my ship tries to align to warp, but is now bumping into the cargo rig. You don't take damage from collisions. Collisions in and of themselves never cause damage. Unless you're in something that's scripted by the programmers to behave in that manner. Generally, collisions don't cause damage. But they can prevent you from aligning to an object, which can prevent you from going to warp. If you're ever in a situation like that, you can control spacebar and double left click in a direction away from whatever it is you're bumping into and get some clearance. Once you've got some empty space around you, then you can go into warp. So left click the station, click warp. That's a very important concept to remember. You'll be keeping it in mind for the rest of your time in EVE Online, along with a whole bunch of other very important concepts like the skill training thing I covered a moment ago. Deep, complex, learning curve of a vertical wall. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. By the way, you can see how long it is taking me to load the captain's quarters. Uh, by the way, that's the view of your avatar. Um, these full-body avatars that we're looking at right now uh, were introduced in the Incarna expansion, a little less than a year before this series was filmed. Uh, 
It's a prelude to a full walking in stations feature, which Crowd Control Productions will eventually get around to, but at the moment only you can uh, see your own full body avatar actually walking around. Uh, some players complain about the graphics strain that this poses on their graphics cards, and you can also see how long it took to load the station. Uh, if you don't like it, you can go to the station surfaces window, right underneath the icon for the corp that owns the station, there's a button called Enter Ship Hangar. Left click the button, and you will be taken to the classic view of the inside of a station. This is what a Galente station looked like before Incarna was ever launched. So this is the sort of station view that uh, myself and many other older players are accustomed to. It also loads much quicker. Let's continue with the tutorial. Contact me through the agent's menu to complete the mission. So just right click Aura, start conversation. And you click the complete mission button. Uh, to complete your mission, everything must be green check marks here on the right hand side of the panel. There's only one green check mark, so you're good. And then click the request mission button. And you'll see that this involves some combat. We don't need the Freedom of Operation license for this, so we can left click and drag it from our cargo hold to the items hangar. Uh, by the way, in case uh, this hadn't uh, been made clear to you, uh, the items hangar represents the items you have in station, uh, whereas this window represents your own ship's cargo hold. By the way, you can close the cargo hold, or if you want to reopen it again, you can just double left click on the ship hangar background, and that will open up your ship's cargo hold again. For those of you who are coming from World of Warcraft, every station is a separate storage space. So whereas in World of Warcraft you had a single bank that you could access from Darnassus or Ironforge or Stormwind or Exodar or Dalaran or wherever, your bank looked the same no matter where you looked at it from. EVE Online is different. You have your own hangar in this station, you've got a separate hangar in some other station, a separate hangar in a third station. There are hundreds of different stations, each with their own separate personal items hangar for you. So if you left something in station A and you go to station B and you open up the items hangar, you need to go all the way back to station A if you left something back there. It's not going to magically show up on station B. For something to go from Station A to Station B, a player had to move it. Let's accept this next mission. Your next trial involves combat. In order to survive, you will need to fit modules to your ship. To begin, access the station's fitting services. Your ship needs to be fitted with a weapon and an armor repair module. Both of these are being provided to you now. Your weapon is capable of dealing high amounts of damage at close range. The small armor repairer is your defensive module. When activated, it will repair a small amount of your ship's armor. You will not be able to keep it running constantly though, so only use it when you have to. By the way, uh, the small armor repairer 1 requires the repair system skill trained to level 1. That's why it was very important that we heard skill training completed earlier. Drag the weapon onto your ship in the fitting area. It will fit into the appropriate slot automatically. Do the same with your defensive module. When you are ready, undock. We can close the fitting window. We can close the agent conversation window, and let's hit the undock button at the bottom of the Neocom. If you have an older friend helping you, they may point out that you don't have ammo on board. That's normal for the tutorial, the game is about to create ammunition for you. Right click empty space. 
combat basics aura, encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive active. And click done. All weapons require ammunition to fire. You are now being provided with close range ammunition. Load your weapon now. And the game created the ammunition for you right in your cargo hold. So right click the weapon and select antimatter charge S. By the way, the other way you can do this, you can open the fitting screen and left click and drag the ammunition from your cargo hold into the middle of your ship. And the button will blink, and there you go, it's loaded. It may incorrectly tell you that it can't be fitted to any of the modules present. Uh, that error message is showing up erroneously. Don't worry about it. Click Next. The type of ammunition you load affects the range at which your turrets can hit. You can access detailed information on your weapon through the heads-up display. Right-click. Show Info. Attributes. Activate the acceleration gate and proceed to the next area when you are ready. Alright, uh, very important thing here about turrets. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the combat mechanics, but turrets, also called guns, miss for two general reasons. Either the target is moving around you too fast, or the target is too far away from you. Uh, you, this is a frigate size short range weapon. It's got a very good attribute called a tracking speed, 0 0.438 radians per second, that's very high. On the opposite end of the scale, you tend to have battleships, uh, battleship long range turrets, which are down near 0 0.01 radians per second. Uh, this is a frigate size weapon, it's also short range for frigates, so it's got a very good tracking speed very, very, very few things are going to move around you so fast that you're going to miss. Range, however, is a problem. The optimal is 500 meters. The fall off, the accuracy fall off is 1500 meters. Again, I'm not going to go into detail, but generally, if something's sitting still relative to you and is at optimal plus fall off away, you've got a 50% chance to hit it on each shot. So try to shoot things, in our case, that's two kilometers or closer. Let's left click the acceleration gate and click activate. And our overview is filled with things called customs offices, which we don't need to know about right now. So I'm going to right click a customs office and I'm going to remove orbital infrastructure from overview. That way I've got more. Good work so far. Next, we need to do a weapons check before we send you into live combat. You should see a fuel depot nearby. Before you can fire on it, you must lock on with your own targeting systems. Get a target lock, close your range, and then open fire. Sorry about that. I got rid of the customs offices from my overview because they're clearing things up. I don't need to know about them. But yes, left click this big fat thing here. You can't miss it. It's a fuel depot. All right, and you can click the fifth button from the left, that's lock button target. And you can either click the module or hit F1 on your keyboard. You've taken damage from the nearby explosion. You should repair your ship now with the defensive module you fitted. 
Remember to deactivate it once you've repaired the damage. You can either left click the module, or for the case of a low slot, the first low slot, you can hit Control F1. Armor repairs will provide their hit points at the end of their cycle. So I'm going to hit Control F1 now to turn this thing off, and when it finishes the cycle, it'll add the second batch of hit points. There we go, two cycles, you're all patched up. Things exploding do not normally cause damage to objects around them, unless they are scripted to do such a thing. There are some exceptions. A weapon called a smart bomb is an area of effect weapon that'll do damage to everything around the user. There's a kind of weapon called a bomb, which is only used in null security, that gets launched by a special kind of frigate, it travels 10 kilometers, it explodes, that's an area of effect weapon. There aren't all that many area of effect weapons. As a matter of fact, I can only recall the bombs and smart bombs. Anything else, it doesn't do area damage unless it's scripted for it specifically. So let's click done. Let's left click the acceleration gate and in previous patches, you would need to approach it first and then activate once you were within range. But nowadays, you can just hit Activate Gate, and your ship will automatically approach it first, and then it will activate once it's within range. Again, that's 2,500 meters. You can hit Control R. I'm sorry, Control R on your keyboard to reload your weapon. Projectiles and missiles take 10 seconds. Hybrids take 5 seconds to reload. Uh, lasers do not need to be reloaded as such. Heads up, pilot. You have two hostile ships inbound to your location. You should see them represented in your overview. Let's take care of them now. Lock the targets. Control left click the little red plus sign. You can do it in the overview or in space. The overview will be easier to hit. Once you have a lock, activate your weapon. Your ship is fitted for close-range combat. Either let the targets close in on you, or use the approach command and close the distance yourself. If you are taking too much damage, activate the defensive module. F1 to activate your weapon. If I had my weapon in the second slot rather than the first slot, I would need to hit F2 to turn on the weapon. And it's so nice of the game to put this tooltip right on top of your shield and armor bars where you can't see what your shield and armor levels are. Here's the second target. Control left click. I can't see where it is in space, but I can see it on the overview, which is very useful. But the, the overview is very useful for that purpose. So if it's nearby and nominally visible, but you don't have your camera pointed at it, you can still find it on the overview. F1, and start shooting. Uh, targets, you can see their shields, armor, and structure bars. As you shoot them, those things will turn red when the structure Good gets... Good work. The area has been cleared of hostile targets. Warp back to the station and dock to complete the mission. I'm sorry I keep doing that. I keep forgetting when Aura is suddenly going to start speaking up. Everything has a shield armor, and a structure bar. When its structure bar gets down to zero, it explodes. Let's left click the station and hit dock. Warp drive active. By the way, this icon in space represents a wreck. It's hollow, so there's nothing of value on it. If it were solid, that would mean there's loot on it. But these don't have any loot, so we're going to ignore them. Oh, by the way, always good practice. Unless it's a laser, reload your weapons when you're uh, when you get a chance. Again, that's Control R on your keyboard, or you can right-click the module and select Reload All. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Contact me through the agent's menu to complete the mission. Right-click, start conversation. 
Everything's green check marks, so complete mission. And request mission. And let's click accept. It's time for you to leave this solar system, pilot. Start by setting your destination in the mission window. I'm going to right click and set destination. There are over 5,000 systems in the known universe, and all of them are connected by stargates. By setting a destination in your ship's computer, you make it easier to navigate the network of stargates. Undock when you are ready. By the way, before we leave, we're going to come right back here to deliver whatever it is Aura wants. So I'm going to right click Sistevere and add waypoint. Don't hit set destination because set destination wipes out all of your previous waypoints and then puts the destination as the first waypoint. If you accidentally wiped out your um, all of your waypoints and you need to start over again, you would right click IDART and set destination, right click system air, add waypoint. I'm going to close this window, I'm going to undock. To get to your destination, warp to the stargate leading to it. The stargate you want to use will be highlighted on your overview because you set the destination beforehand. So just look for the yellow brick stargate, right click, and we can just select jump. That's a, also a new feature that came with a recent patch. If you're out of range from the stargate, your ship will warp or approach the gate first and then jump. In patches past, it would be your responsibility to get within 2,500 2, meters of the gate first before you would be allowed to use the jump command. Not anymore. You tell your ship to jump, and your ship will first get in range, and then jump. Once you have arrived at the Stargate, jump through to the next solar system. Click Next when you have arrived. So yeah, the uh, built-in game tutorial is a little bit uh, a little bit out of date on this subject. So we are warping to the gate at zero, and the ship will jump through of its own accord. If you realize mid-flight that you wanted to change your mind, you don't want to jump through after all, because you've been told that there are en enemies who are waiting to ambush you on the other side. You can always hit control spacebar while in the middle of a warp, and that will cancel the jump command. Now that we are in IDART, right click, and Agent Missions, the Academy, Aura, Encounter, warp to zero. Warp drive active. You've arrived at the Academy. Good work. Now, approach the Academy and retrieve your certification documents from inside. Click Next. You may okay. want to take a closer look at this fleet of ships. The Look At function allows you to get a closer view from one of your camera drones. So you can left-click something and hit Look At, or you can just right-click something and hit Look At. If it doesn't work the first time, that probably means it's in warp or something. There we go. And you can always right-click empty space and reset your camera to look at your own ship again. But let's left-click the Academy office and let's hit open cargo. And your ship will automatically approach first. The 
The Show Information Command can give you detailed information on anything you have selected. Now you need to return to the system you came from. The system name will be displayed in your mission journal, which stores information about any active missions you have. Open the mission journal now. I accidentally missed a step. Now that we're here at the Academy office and we open the cargo, we can click the Loot All button. So this works with all loot containers and wrecks. And we can close this. Let's double click. You know what? Let me double click in the direction of the yellow brick Stargate. There we go. Let's open the journal. Set the destination to your starting system through the mission journal. Uh, if we were going to follow these instructions, we would double left click the mission in question. That opens up a new window and we could scroll down. We would normally right click the station and select set destination, but that's not necessary here because we already set it as a destination. Uh, we, well, rather, we added it as a waypoint before we even left. Now the destination is set, warp to the highlighted Stargate and jump back through to your starting system. Speak with me again at the station to complete the mission. Let's close this, let's close this, and let's left click the Stargate. Uh, notice that I'm already moving at sublight speed towards that Stargate. If I click the jump button, warp drive. I go instantly into warp. This is worth reviewing a little bit. To go to warp, your ship must be moving towards that destination, I think within about 5 or 10 degrees angle, and at least 75% of whatever its maximum sublight velocity is. I already happened to be moving towards the Stargate uh, at that speed, so I was already aligned to the gate. So when I gave the command to jump, or to warp. My ship was already aligned, it didn't need to spend any extra time trying to align. If you weren't aligned to the gate, it would have taken you a few extra seconds to align first before you went into warp. Yet another very important concept to keep in mind, because there are situations where if you can't align fast enough, somebody might destroy your ship before you can align, or they might warp scramble you so that you, you can't go into warp and then destroy your ship. Let's click the yellow brick station and click dock. Warp drive active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Right click Aura, start conversation. And complete mission. Excellent work. You've now learned all of the basics a capsule pilot needs to know. Now that you've covered the essentials, you're ready to complete more advanced courses. Throughout each course, you will be rewarded with more money and items than you'll be able to make elsewhere, and completing the courses will also reward you with new ships. There are a number of courses available, from combat, to exploration, to industry, and more. Speak with me again when you're ready to begin. Click Done, and click Request Mission. And let's right-click Clullanon, which is the drop-off location, or whatever the drop-off location is for your race and education, and click Set Destination. We're not coming back here. Click Accept. To reach your new agents, you will need to jump through multiple Stargates before arriving at your destination. 
Use the set destination command to guide you along the correct route and then dock at the station where they are located. Click next. And when you finish reading this, click next and done. Click close. We're not staying here, or, or rather we're not coming back. So grab everything, put it in your cargo hold. Um, before we actually set out, there is something that I want you to do, which you're going to find useful. I'll go into detail later. Uh, on the Neocom, you want to look for a button that says Market. If you're having trouble seeing it, you can go to the Open Eve menu at the top of the Neocom. You can go to Business and Market. That'll take you to this window. Uh, just for good measure, we're going to go to the lower left hand corner, click off, show only available, that checkbox should be empty, change the range filter to region, let's go to the search tab and I want you to type in, click in this field and type in industry, and push return, left click the search result, uh, hold on, what is the wallet looking like, Irk. can't do this right now. Uh, one of the later tutorials, which we will get started on the next episode. You know what, let me undock while I'm flapping my jaw. One of the later tutorials uh, that we're going to uh, get started on uh, in the next episode of How to Survive EVE Online uh, is going to require that you have the industry skill trained. But annoyingly enough, the game does not provide you with this skill book. So you'll need to buy a copy of it off the market and inject it yourself and train that up to level one in order to be able to continue on with the uh, with the industry chain of missions. I'll go into further detail about that uh, next episode. By the way, while we are traveling, let me explain this part of the interface in the upper left. Uh, as Aura mentioned, there are thousands of solar systems connected by stargates. So you have to, you very frequently have to go through multiple gates to get somewhere. So whenever you set a destination, each solar system is marked with an icon. And the color of the icon represents the security level of the space. Uh, EVE Online is a PvP-centric game. Anybody can shoot at you while you are in space at any time. It's just that in areas called high security space, there are consequences for this. Anybody who shoots at you unprovoked is going to be destroyed by the Concord police. That may not necessarily happen fast enough to save your ship, but the aggressors will be destroyed. It is always possible, however, for the accomplice who never fired a shot to come on up and steal everything off of the wrecks. The violent actions are a Concordokin offense, but stealing is not. So try to avoid carrying anything that's too valuable on your ship. But for the most part, as long as you're not carrying anything horribly valuable on an easily destroyed ship, uh, most people will leave you alone in high security space. So the color of the icon represents the security level of the system. Uh, starting off in EVE Online, you generally want to limit yourself to blue, green, or yellow. That's going to be 0 0.5 security or higher. And the exact number is displayed in the upper left corner for your current solar system. You can also mouse over any uh, system on your route to see the security level of that particular system. Orange is 0.4 and 0.3, red is 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 and below. Right. 0.4 security and lower, that is orange and red, there is no Concord police. Other players can shoot at you without being destroyed by the Concord police. The Concord police will never show up. So, be very careful when you venture into low or null security space. Alright, here we are in Clelanon.
And there's the station in question. Left click the station and click dock. Alright, let me check this mission in the journal here. How much are you going to be paid for? Alright, you're only getting 500 isk. And the wallet, you're probably only going to have 7,000 isk by the time you turn this in. Alright. So I can't tell you to go get the industry skill book just yet. Oh well, there will be time. We'll take care of that next episode. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Right click Aura and start conversation. Everything is green check marks, so complete the mission. Well done. You've made it to the system. I've relayed more information about the courses available to your Neocom. Each course is designed to let you try out various activities without any long-term commitment. You are free to take these courses in any order, so start with whatever interests you most. Click Next. And click Done. If you need to close this, uh, this window is what we're going to use to get started in the next episode. If you need to close it, you can find it again by going to Help in the Neocom, or the Eve menu, and you can go to Help here. Uh, let's close this thing. But that's going to be it for this episode. I'm going to drop my Freedom of Operation license in the items hangar. Uh, that will be it for this episode. In the next episode, we will get started on the industry and business chains. In the meantime, thank you for watching.